Hey Plannerholics, welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd share today how I've been using my Hoboniti for the past four months of the year so far. The cover I'm using is one I made in a recent video when I did a collage tutorial using photos from my zinc printer and a few embellishing pieces from my stationery stash. Anyway, I really love looking at it. In case you don't know, I have a Hobonichi Cousin Planner. It's an A5 size with a full year inside, but there's an Avec version where you can have half the year in one book and the other half in another book, and that's actually the one that I wanted to purchase, but I accidentally got the 12 month book. And even though I still love it, um, unfortunately, because I add a lot of bulk to it, it's getting quite heavy, so lately I don't carry it around with me. Instead, I leave it at home and I try to check every morning when I wake up and in the evenings if I have to add anything inside. Anyway, moving on, I thought I'd share the different ways I've been using it and how I've been planning in it as well. I've done a few plan with me videos in the past. If you want to check those out, I will be leaving the links below, but I really haven't shown you or given you a proper look inside. So I wanted to do that today and give you guys an update of what's been going on inside my planner. When you open it up, I just have a few random stickers here and my Pipsticks lottery ticket. I did join their monthly subscription since I clearly need more stickers in my life. Um, also, let me know in the comments if you would like me to do some unboxings of Pipsticks because they have some awesome things. You've probably seen these next pages from my past setup videos, but this is where I jot down when I take days off from work and if I'm going on vacation, so I know exactly the number of days I took and I have a record of that. Then we go into my future log. In here, I write all of my birthdays and holidays and any events that are coming up, like movie or book premieres, just events that I want to know for the future, I will write those down in the space below. I also use some page flags if I have to write reminders, for example, upcoming payments or appointments. Next, we go into the monthly spreads. Here, I just have an overview of my plants for the month. I will transfer the information from my yearly spread into the monthly. And then I will do the monthly into the weekly and so forth. So this way, I'm always up to date of what's going on and I'm aware of everything that's happening each day in case I need to plan anything out for future days to come. And as you can see, I really like to decorate and make different themes for each month. This is January. I try to keep things really simple, but with an edge of cute. <laughs> I like to use washi, uh, page flags, stickers, all sorts of cute things just to make my spreads a little happier. This is February. I like to use um, lots of functional stickers especially, but um, since I like to do different themes, I always pick like different or specific decorative stickers just to make that page different from the rest. This is the month of March. Um, as you can see, I also sometimes like to write out my main to-dos in the sidebar. And next up, we have April. Um, I wasn't very active in April, I have to say, inside this planner. Just the weekly spreads, but um, this is the initial setup that I like to do and Usually, like I mentioned, I will fill out the appointments or other events as they come up throughout the days. Now let's take a look at my weekly pages. I started off really, really simple. I did some time blocking using the schedule on the sheet and a few decorative elements. The next week has more time blocking and sometimes I did the, I used the top three on the top uh, for my important task and on the sidebar I usually write a short to-do list or to-buy list and I also keep a log of my expenses which you'll be seeing covered up from here on. Here's the Mermaid's Tales weekly theme that I did a plan with me video on back in January. If you want to check that out, I will leave the link below. 
the next week I tried doing some meal planning but I wasn't very consistent as you can see I also enjoy I also enjoy sorry using lots of half boxes and labels to plan to plan out the events so just just so that they can stand out on the spread this week I tracked the weather on the top and I attempted to do some hand lettering at the bottom but I usually cover this space up with washi tape Here's another week. Um, I always try and use the time schedule on the planner, but sometimes I'll use the top portion to write out a to-do list or the events that are happening that day. Just because the top portion is always my work hours and because I have a separate work planner, I don't use that space much for personal tasks. So I like to cover that up maybe just to write like long to-do list or maybe just anything that pops up during the day. This is Valentine's week, and I absolutely loved how this spread turned out. Next, we have just a plain yellow theme, um, everything yellow, and I also really enjoyed doing this spread. Here is my Boho Spring theme week. Um, I also have a plan with me video for this one. It was when I designed a special weekly sticker kit for the Hobonichi. And I really loved it because there was tons of different stickers that could be used in many different ways. And again, I like the full look that it has because um, there's just lots of variety and it feels like the week was productive. And because the sticker kit had lots of stickers, obviously they weren't all used in that one week. So those that I had left over, I transferred to this next week. And again, as you can see, it's all like the same um, theme with colors but in a different style so there's lots of things you can do with the stickers here i tried a saint patrick's day or saint patrick's week theme also with my sticker designs and with the leftover stickers as you're going to be seeing um, i use them for the next week then we have my birthday week not really exciting, but I had just received my Pipstick subscription, so I was trying a few stickers from there, as well as some stickers that I was given as my birthday presents. <laughs> so again, not really filled out, but still with an edge of cute, as I like to say. And really, my planning style started evolving and or finding its own style um, from this week on. Um, I really liked using my mini icon stickers for functionality and any empty spaces I would fill up with decorative stickers and it just makes the spread look really inviting and makes me feel productive as well to complete all of my tasks. And this week right here that we're looking at is Easter week. It's one of my favorite spreads because there wasn't actually a lot of productiveness to it but it just looks really pretty with the colors. <laughs> then I tried doing a Dr. Seuss theme. It's very full and with lots of things that I enjoy and this is my last week of April. I was trying to go for a cat theme. So as you can see, each week has its own theme. Maybe if it's, it's not like based on a, on a specific character or anything, but maybe it's just focused on like a color. But anyway, I always do some pre-planning before I decorate or plan out my, uh, my week with my stickers. And for that, I use page flags and post-its to write out everything and just to have a general idea of what's gonna happen that week. And now we're gonna check out my daily pages, which is what a lot of you have been requesting on social media. Um, this first month of the planner, I use the daily pages as a creative journal um, sort of book. Um, I didn't really plan in these pages just because the A5 was kind of intimidating in the sense that there was so much room and I already had a monthly, a yearly, a weekly spread to write out all of my actual planning and tasks. So I wanted to sort of have like a memory place where I could write out just like little tidbits that I did that day or little anecdotes, highlights of my day. So I decided to cut out lots of different magazine clippings and use a, a bunch of embellishing 
um, things that I had from my stationery stash, stickers obviously, and then even like small photos that I would take with my phone. I would print those out and then use them for these pages in a way to make it like a nice like a uh, scrapbook or art journal form of journaling. And as you can see, I never actually finished um, journaling my month of January. I would use some post-its to write out the, like the little highlights of my day so that when I did find the time, maybe not that same day, but like a few days later, when I found the time to actually sit down and cut up some of my clippings and things, I would actually sit down and decorate my pages. But that last week's, I don't know, I guess, you know, life happened and I never finished doing that. But I do have my post-its there just in case I want to go back one day and finish up the month. For the month of February, um, I decided to do the Hobonichi challenge and I used washi tape across the top to write out the, each and every single prompt for each day. Again, I didn't complete the challenge like every single day. I only managed to do a few days and it was just nice, like a different vibe to the whole creative journaling style. And I, I wanted to try different things just because the journaling or the daily journaling got really um, overwhelming just because I didn't find the time and I didn't like going out of order. So then I tried uh, going for this Hobonichi challenge option just to see if it would be easier to keep up with. But again, um, it had the added difficult level of trying to find something to adapt that prompt with and also that pushed me back to using it. But it's okay, you know, I don't mind having the empty pages anymore. It used to be a really big problem for me having empty pages in my planners or just empty spaces, but I no longer care. So as long as I keep using the planner, all is good. Here's the last pages of the month. And here for March, I tried going back again to the creative journaling because I missed it. Obviously, after having been a month and a few days without journaling I missed going to that I missed the act of actually writing out what I felt that day or what I experienced and the creative outlet of doing different collages and trying out watercolors using all my washi tape I just really like that part um, from the creative journaling side of aspects so March was pretty good um, I almost finished the entire month except for a few blank pages that you're gonna be seeing coming up but I was pretty good with March. And now we've arrived on to April. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, April was a very slacking month for me in the sense that I wasn't really updating my planner much, just my weekly spread. That's because that's where I keep my to-dos. But either my monthly or my daily pages are really um, filled out, as you can see right here. I just skipped these all of these days. I didn't do anything. Um, and then I would have suddenly like a day where I felt really creative and I wanted to go back to my journaling and that's what I did in these few set of pages. I did journal a little bit. And here I sort of like stopped and then something happened and I decided to do a fitness challenge and I follow this amazing hashtag call, um, it's called TIU Bikini Series and it's these two wonderful amazing girls who have dedicated I think for I don't know how many years each year they do a fitness program and they've designed this um, bikini series basically that's what they call it and they give you daily workouts um, they post some free videos on their YouTube channel and you can do exercise with them and it's really motivating and so I decided to track my fitness journey in for April and May as for as long as the program is I think it's eight weeks that it lasts so I've gotten in the habit of tracking that so I'm really happy with that and I've been fairly consistent with it with it so far and it's just another way to use my daily pages because there's so many opportunities and things that you can do with so much room in this planner and as you can see it's getting quite chunky and I'm absolutely loving it. It's still been super functional for me and so far I don't have any intentions of starting a new planner. Um, but yeah, 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if it's something that you want to see periodically every few months to do a flip through of my planner if you, it's something that you find inspiring. And any questions that you have, just please leave them down in the comments. And I will talk to you soon. Bye everybody!